Cryptocurrencies are a type of digital currency that's very different from traditional digital currencies that are regulated by central banks around the world. Cryptocurrencies are so far unregulated. This means that their values are not determined by a known regulatory or financial institution, but for the most part by the group of people utilizing this type of currency. Cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoins and Ripple emerged within the last decade, disrupting the historically stayed global financial market. Many of you may have been invited to presentations on blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies as the newest investment instrument. However, how much do you really know about this new digital currency? At the Telecommunications Authority of Trinidad and Tobago's 28th ICT Open Forum, a range of issues related to cryptocurrencies were explored. The objective of the forum, titled Cryptocurrencies – Implications for Trinidad and Tobago, was to initiate discussion on issues related to cryptocurrencies, including cybersecurity, global trading, central financial authority, and legal considerations. Ms. Vashti Maraj, head of legal in the Ministry of the Attorney General and Legal Affairs, provided the audience with good basic information about cryptocurrencies. When you hear cryptocurrency, there is the tendency to use virtual currencies, digital currencies, cryptocurrencies, all interchangeably. So when you would look at fiat currency, that is basic dollars and cents. The dollar value, the general accepted form of money, including coins and paper notes, which is issued by a government. And that is what we're all accustomed to and we all generally have in our wallets. Um, digital currency, however, is a type of currency available in digital form, not in physical. Examples include virtual currencies and cryptocurrencies. Now you're going to notice a degree of overlap in the terms that I use. And these terms are taken from the FATF recommendations with regard to virtual currencies that are recommended for common usage throughout all FATF countries. Then you're looking at virtual currencies, a digital representation of value that can be digitally traded and functions as a medium of exchange and or a unit of account, a stored value, but does not have legal tender status in any jurisdiction. And that tends to be the contentious one that central banks have an issue with because of the fact that it is essentially issued or regulated. Cryptocurrencies. The value of cryptocurrencies is moved depending on supply and demand. And I think my colleague had touched on that in terms of they're not minted by a central bank they are actually created through data mining and they're issued on a peer-to-peer -peer basis. So it is issued based on blockchain technology and using a distributed ledger basis. According to the Mission Daily, an online magazine, many entrepreneurs have jumped on the bandwagon to create initial coin offering or ICO campaigns, selling tokens to the public and raising hundreds of millions of dollars. An ICO is similar in concept to an initial public offering, but is an investment that gives the investor a crypto coin in return for investment. Satoshi Nakamoto is thought to have designed and created Bitcoins approximately 10 years ago. Since then, a lot seems to have happened in the cryptocurrency space. There are three types of cryptocurrencies and at the forum, Mr. Aaron Besson, founder of Morpheus Software Solutions Limited, explained. We have currencies, which are usually primarily used for payments, right, or store of value. Then we have securities, which are usually ex externally tradable assets, They're just like shares in a company. Think of them that way. And then we have utility tokens. Utility tokens, Mr. Besson said, are primarily used to access or unlock platform features. Often called app coins or user tokens, utility tokens provide users with future access to a product or service. Through utility tokens, ICOs, startups can raise capital to fund the development of their blockchain projects and users can purchase future access to that service, sometimes at a discount off the finished product's price. Mr. Besson presented an interesting hypothetical scenario that could be implemented within the Trinidad and Tobago framework. We're going to do an ICO for a ferry service. 
right? This is all theoretical, so nobody approached me to buy the token after. I'm starting a company, we're gonna call it the Trinity Ferry Service. And I need to raise 350 million TT dollars to buy a new ferry to take us to Tobago. So what I've decided to do is I've created an ICO and I've written a smart contract that will mint a maximum of 500 million tokens. Each token is worth $1 TT. You could pay for the tokens with TT dollars, with US dollars, Bitcoin, Ethereum, or NEO, right? And the way it works is if you have 100 of these tokens, you could get a trip to Tobago, which is a great, a great savings, isn't it? So what we might find is that people would want to participate in this, right? And also it's for a great cause. We're gonna buy a new boat, the people would own the boat, and we could take it to Tobago, right? Now, in this case, what type of token would you say this is? This is a utility token, isn't it? You're buying the token to take a trip to Tobago, right? And we could write into the smart contract that once one token is used, it's burnt immediately. So that token is taken out of the system. So there's no inflation and there's none of that stuff. And once all the tokens are used up, people have to buy the tickets with regular money and they have to pay the full price. So it pushes the demand for these to tokens as well, don't you think? Mr. Besson's concern lay, however, in protection for consumers and stressed the need for oversight and incubation for ideas. Most of these tokens are minted via smart contracts and most of these smart contracts and whatnot are now used for something called an initial coin offering, right? An unregulated means by which of raising capital for a business. I mean, just reading it out loud sounds obscene. And what, we, what we're gonna find here in Trinidad is that, yeah, Trinidad have a lot of smart men and that kind of thing. But what you will find is the smart men from overseas coming here to set up shop. Because we're unregulated and because we're seen as a third world country that's moving slowly and dragging our feet, these people are going to come into this space and take advantage of us. So this may sound really crazy coming from me as somebody who is invested and building and an entrepreneur in this space. But to a certain degree, I welcome the regulation. I welcome the oversight because for a young entrepreneur like myself who wants to work with the SEC and the Central Bank and the Ministry of Legal Affairs and the Office of the Attorney General to ensure that we are above board in everything that we're doing in the years going forward, um, I do believe that there's a certain amount of consumer protection that is needed to ensure that people are not just investing wildly in things and losing their money. Though cryptocurrencies are not yet regulated, Persons who already use cryptocurrencies or those who are thinking about it should bear in mind regulatory issues. Cryptocurrencies and taxation were examined at the forum and Ms. Vashti Maraj identified the challenges with taxing cryptocurrencies as they are designed to depreciate in value. In terms of taxation, cryptocurrencies are treated very differently from country to country. So by way of analogy, the US IRS rules that bitcoins and other digital currencies are to be taxed as property, not currency. But in Germany, if you happen to go there and do a transaction using digital currency, it is treated as private money. And it goes in different ways across the board. So how do you tax when it is treated differently within different jurisdictions? Globally, the International Organization of Securities Commissions, the IOSCO, established in 1983, is the body that brings together the world's securities regulators and is recognized as the global standard setter for the securities sector. IOSCO develops, implements and promotes adherence to internationally recognized standards for securities regulation. Its membership regulates more than 95% of the world's securities markets in more than 115 jurisdictions. Securities regulators in emerging markets account for 75% of its ordinary membership. Locally, the three financial supervisory authorities within Trinidad and Tobago's Financial Obligations Regulations 2010 are the Central Bank, Trinidad and Tobago Securities and Exchange Commission, the TTSEC, and the Financial Intelligence Unit, the FIU. 
These three organizations bear the responsibility for ensuring this country's compliance with anti-money laundering and combating the financing of terrorism, AML, CFT, legislative and regulatory requirements. Trinidad and Tobago Securities and Exchange Commission is the sole regulator of the securities industry in the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. The Commission's role is to foster the orderly development of the securities market. Mr. Hayden Gittins, Chief Executive Officer of the TTSEC, also presented at the forum and informed the audience of international developments regarding cryptocurrencies. So in 2016, they issued their first warning. Um, uh, you know, it's expressed concern from an investor protection perspective given the current level of regulation and the lack of associated investor information. In January 2018, they issued a, a media release um, which outlined its, its concerns as it relates to ICOs, which stated that there are clear risks associated with these offerings as they were found to be highly speculative investments in which investors are putting their entire invested capital at risk. And they highlighted the increased targeting of ICOs to retail investors through online, online distribution channels by parties often located outside an investor's home jurisdiction. A lot of what we found as a regulator is that and these people are very sophisticated and smart. These are the scam folks. So they, 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 they of course, people who um, spend a lot of time online provide a lot of information on themselves and their profile. And that's critical information. And that's really what drives everything else. So that's so. So when you spend a lot of time on uh, online and you and you and you go onto Facebook or some any other online thing, and you realize that the the, the content starts to um, look very familiar and, and, and stuff that you that you that you you tend to be interested in, that's it. That's it. That's a medium responding to you. But what happens? So these people um, use these media, and then when they get into the market, they target influential people in the market retired teachers, child police, police, policemen, and so on. And these become the folks that, that, that um, allow them to, 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 to gain entry into the market. You know, so, so that's the sort of threat that really we face as a, as a regulator, and that's, that's what we deal with. Internationally, guidelines have been issued to regulate digital currency firms, while some countries have implemented legislation banning their use. Transparency is paramount for regulators in Trinidad and Tobago to become comfortable with cryptocurrencies within the financial landscape. Necessity is the mother of all invention, and over the last 30 years, the world has seen the evolution of the internet and its value. It connects us with those we love, allows us to send messages, and even share precious moments. We engage in e-commerce daily, to check our bank balances, transfer funds, and purchase products and services online. Perhaps within the next two or three decades, cryptocurrencies may become as widely used as its host, the internet. Maybe it's not too far off, and if so, its presence may foster amazing innovation. The future is within reach.